how can we change the electronic configuration, how the electrons are arranged in an atom? Let's have a careful look at this. If I shine a green laser, nothing much. If I shine a UV laser, wow, what is happening? What did the UV laser do to the electrons? What is happening now? And if I use a more diffuse source of UV, let's have a look. There we go. So let's try that again. How can I change the electronic configuration, how the electrons are arranged? in an atom. If I use a green laser, I don't see anything exciting, but if I use a violet UV laser, there we go. And if I use a more diffuse source, continues to emit light. What is it emitting? Photons. What evidence does this provide for? Where do the electrons live? Where do they have their house? Quotation marks. So that we can do something like this. Here we have a partially evacuated tube where we have a cathode and an anode. Cathode, anode. This is called a cold cathode because we're not going to be heating the cathode. Let's see what happens as we increase the potential difference to a few thousand volts between them. So I'm on now 0.3 kilovolts. I'm increasing 1 kilovolt. Ah, something has happened. We can see a green light. These are the electrons being emitted, and as I increase the voltage, the line becomes brighter. So what we're seeing actually is the first experiment that was used to discover electrons. And initially they were called cathode rays because they didn't know that these were electrons. So how is, are these electrons being produced? What makes them give off light as they move from the cathode to the anode? Remember, this is a partially evacuated tube. In other words, there is a gas in there. What happens to the atoms of the gas as the electrons collide with them? Hence, how do they emit light? And if I increase the voltage further, you can clearly see that this becomes even brighter. Let's have a look at light spectra. Here we have a tube containing krypton. And when we connect it to an EHT, we have this very characteristic light. Let's add a diffraction grating in front of the camera and look carefully. What do we see? This has 140 lines per millimeter. How about if we change the gas to hydrogen? This is a hydrogen discharge tube. Now let's try the same thing. What is the same? What is different? How does that compare to light from a normal light bulb or an LED? Let's try that with an LED, white LED. And let's have a look. What do we see now? Let's try with a different diffraction grating. 
So if I change the diffraction grading, how can we use the following equipment to model alpha particle scatter? We have a ramp down which we can roll a sphere, we have a line paper, and we have a heavy black weight in the middle. So let's roll the sphere and see what happens. Okay, let's try that again. How does this relate to alpha particle scattering? Are there any limitations to this model compared to real life? Let's try and move the ramp a bit. And let's see what happens now. Let's try one more. There we go. Here we have a spark detector connected to an inch T. The potential is roughly 4,000 volts. And as you can see, we see no sparks. I'm going to bring an alpha source very close to the window of the spark detector. This is just a gas mantle, old style, which were radioactive. And there we go. How do we know alphas are involved? We have worked if it was gamma only. So let's try that again. What are we actually observing? 